Hello everyone. In this ninth lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to explore animation and we're also going to make our character face the correct direction whenever he moves. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So animation can be done through Unity or it can be done through whatever application or model is built in. We're not going to do an animation in Unity because we already have an animation that comes with this model that we attached to our game last time. So if we go to that animations folder, we can see a couple of different things. And the one we're dealing with is Dragon. Firstly, we have the controller. And in its simplest terms, you can think of the controller as something which attaches to the animator component, which allows you to control animations, i.e. what animations are there. The next object along is an FBX, and this basically contains a couple of extra files all in one. And if we click the little play button next to it, we can expand that out. The file we need to use is this one here that says move. This is an animation file. If you're in an older version of Unity, your file may look a little different, as you've probably noticed by now. Uh, but realistically, it's going to be the same kind of thing. I think the older versions before 2019 have a little play button. So we need to take this animation, hold control and press D, and it will duplicate it outside of that FBX. So it becomes its own individual object. Make sure loop time is ticked up above. And now what we need to do is just drag and drop this animation onto our character, which is the dragon. Make sure we don't drag it onto the player because this is the cube. There's no animation on there. It's all on the dragon. So drag and drop. And you'll notice that the controller now becomes dragon one because we've created an extra controller. And that means the animation is on there. To double check this, we can double click the controller here and it will open up the animator panel. And we can see here that move is indeed attached to the entry point. So we could attach further animations here if we wanted to. However, we don't really need to at the moment. We just want our character to move. So let's click back to the scene view and let's press the play button and we should see the animation. Cool. So now what we need to do, we have the animation in place. We now need to set this up so as our character faces the correct direction. Now we're gonna do this in a very clever way because we're not actually going to rotate the player cube. We're only going to rotate the model. It's not really going to matter at all in its simplest terms, simply because the model is all we're ever going to see. So as long as the model's fine, there's no worries at all, because there's no reason to rotate the cube whatsoever. So let's go into our script where we can modify this. So let's go to our scripts and we're going to need the player control script. So let's head back into there. So we are going to basically create a couple more if statements to detect what keys we are pressing a little later on in this tutorial. But for now, all we need is an extra variable, which is going to be the dragon itself. So let's declare this here. Public game object. And we can call this anything we want, but let's make it relative to what we're doing. So we'll call it player dragon and a semicolon. So the easiest way of doing this is whenever we're pressing a button, we make our character face that direction. And the way we do it is based on rotation. So we have to rotate our dragon locally. And what that means is that we only rotate what's inside the cube, i.e. the dragon. So we'll start with the very first if statement, key code A. So we need it to face in the left direction, which is going to be 270 degrees. If you imagine, up at the top is zero, to the right is 90, down below is 180, and to the left is 270. So we go in increments of 90 right angles. So let's try this. What we need to do is if we go below the movement here, and we now need to say player dragon, because we're referencing just that dragon, dot transform dot local rotation and you'll notice it's a lowercase l and an uppercase r there so make sure you do get your capitalization correct 
equals, and now we have to define what we're doing here to the rotation. We have to use the term quaternion, which if you start typing will indeed show up by default, dot Euler or Euler angles. It depends on your pronunciation here, but it's spelled E-U-L-E-R. And the way this works is it's now telling it to basically rotate on either X, Y, or Z, or all of them, depending on what we put here. So in brackets, we now need to put zero for the X, 270 for the Y, and then zero for the Z or Z, semicolon. So what we've done here is if we're pressing A, it means that we are now going to rotate the player to the left, i.e. 270 degrees. So we can copy this line of code and we can place it here. And now this is going to be 90. So 90 degrees would be to the right. Remember, zero is at the top, then 90, then 180, then 270, which means that key code W, which is up, is going to be zero. So we're completely resetting the rotation there. And finally, S is going to be the inverse of zero, which will be 180. So let's save that script, head back into Unity, let it compile. And let's press play and make sure that it does indeed work. Oh, of course. This is a classic Jimmy moment if you haven't, um, if this is your first time with me. <laughs> so on the player itself, we do have to actually define the player dragon right there. Sometimes I have to wonder about myself, but this is actually a great way of seeing something here. This is an unintended uh, bit of education now for you guys. So you'll notice down the bottom, we have a red warning saying unassigned reference exception. If we now click on console, this will tell us where we've gone wrong. We can see right here, you probably need to assign the player dragon variable of the player control script in the inspector. So right there, if you come across that kind of error, you've done the exact same as me. I could get away with that and say that that was intentional, but I think you guys probably know me best now. That was not intentional, that was uh, a Jimmy. I did a Jimmy. So let's clear that. Let's go back to project, let's press play, and now let's see this in all its glory. There we go. Excellent. So there is one extra little thing that won't work here. Are we ready? There we go. That just looks utterly crazy. He's not facing the correct direction. So the direction he's facing can only be up, down, left or right. There is no middle direction. So if we held W and D, for example, he wouldn't go up to the northeast. So we have to write some extra lines of code to compensate for that. So if we go back to our player control script, we now need to write a couple of extra if statements below here. And these if statements are going to be able to detect if we're pressing two keys at once, i.e. if we press W and D, then our actual rotation needs to be 45 degrees rather than uh, zero or 90. So to do that, we use the exact same kind of code. So let's go if input dot get key, as we've done previously, and in brackets, key code dot w and instead of carrying this on what we do is we do double ampersand because that is an and so we need two if statements to exist at the same time so if we repeat what we've done here but with the d key so input dot get key and in brackets key code dot d and then open curly bracket, you'll see what we've done is we've said if we're pressing W key and the D key, then we need to do whatever we need it to do. So in this case, we'll copy this line of code here, place it in this if statement, and we'll say that this is now 45 degrees. So that means that our player is going to go 45 degrees only when we're pressing W and D. Now, obviously, that same principle is going to need to be applied for when we press D and S. 
when we press S and A, and also when we press A and W. So let's copy that, place it below, and change this to key code D and key code S, and that is going to be an additional 90 degrees on top of, a of 45, so that's going to be 135. Once again, we need to do the same. So in this case, it's going to be S and A. So if we hold S and A, we want to move southwest, which means that this is now going to be 225 because we're adding 90 degrees to our 135. And finally, the last key code combination is going to be A and W which means that this is now going to be 315 because we're adding that extra 90 degrees to 225. And that's all there is to it. This whole script will now make our character move in the correct direction and face the correct direction at all times. So let's save our script. Let's head back into Unity. And there we go, it has indeed compiled and let's press play and make sure this all works so down and that angles there we go we can see our angles all working there we go every single one works just fine cool so feel free to modify that as much as you need to if you need it a bit more refined you can you absolutely can do that so next tutorial, what I would like to get into is some movable objects and a little bit of physics. I think physics is something some people may think of as a bit daunting, much like coding, but it really isn't, not for what we're doing here. It's going to be a lot of fun because we're going to see some cool things happen in Unity. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.